Yo, it's Kali Salam, back with another episode of the Peace Seekers Podcast, Season 2. And in this episode, I want to talk about self-reflection and the importance of self-reflection, right? Reflecting on yourself and trying to understand who you are and why you do the things that you do, right? I was having a conversation the other day, you know, I was actually having a conversation with, with GX, you all know him from... Up the last episode of the last season Part 1 We do have part 2 coming soon But I was I was talking to him about Some of the things that I try to do On a day to day basis Or you know a weekly basis On a regular basis I try to Reflect back on my life In the sense of Trying to understand myself And understand why I do the things that I do Why do I have the habits that I have? Why do I react in situations the way that I do? And I think that that is very important because if you don't understand where the problem stems from or where the problem lies, how would you expect to actually overcome these issues and change and grow as an individual? I think the reason that individuals stay stagnant and why depression is a thing that people hold on to or or are stuck in for so long is because they fail to actually look themselves in the mirror and say I am this way because of this or I am this way because of that and these are the steps that I need to take to change it you know the example that I gave to to G is you know before I embraced Islam and even after I embraced Islam you know it wasn't it wasn't an overnight process but One of the things that I realized about myself was that when I'm angry or upset or saddened about something or by someone, my initial reaction was to lash out, right? I always had the feeling of, and it's not even necessarily a feeling, it's just I believe deep down inside it stems from uh, from me wanting to be heard right me wanting to be to be listened to or you know problems that i've had in life wanting people to hear how i feel and the problem with that is when you're angry or when you're sad those are some of the worst times to actually say exactly how you feel because you have so many emotions running So learning how to calm yourself and give yourself the needed amount of time to reflect on the situation at hand so you can bring the most positive response is very important. But as I wanted to change this about myself, I had to ask myself, why do I respond in this manner? Why do I respond like this? Why do I lash out? Why is that my initial reaction when I'm mad, right? And so I thought back in my life and I'm like, okay, well, let me think about the earliest times that I can remember reacting in this manner. And I believe it stems back to in my childhood, the relationship that I had with my parents. I felt as though in a lot of situations without exposing them too much. When things would happen or I wanted the attention of my parents or wanted the the attention of the people around me. It was, you know, because I felt feelings of maybe depression coming on, but not actually knowing it was depression at the time. You have those feelings and those emotions and you want to share them with your parents. You want your parents to nurture you, to show you love and to embrace you and to. To. I don't want to say coddle, but to. to, You look to your parents for protection and that may not be protection from a physical threat, but an emotional threat or a mental threat. And I felt in a lot of moments in my childhood that 
I wasn't being heard. So what would happen when, you know, you grew up in a single parent household and your mom is going out with her friends because she's young. And you're telling her don't go. Right. But she's not listening. So you're crying and you're screaming and you're yelling. No, mom, no, mom, no, don't. You know what I mean? But they leave anyway. Right on the surface to them, that's not that big of a deal. We're just going to the club. We're not going. We're just going here. We're going there. I'm going to come back. But as a kid, you start to build a habit of when I want to voice how I feel emotionally, you're not hearing me. So I'm yelling. And in turn, that becomes a habit and it builds up and it builds up and it builds up. You know. So. I think just going through years and years of that, I developed a habit to where emotionally I wasn't, I didn't have the wisdom, I didn't have the knowledge in knowing how to deal with emotions. And because of that, I didn't have the wisdom to actually implement or to, I didn't, I wasn't able to implement that level of wisdom to voice my opinion in a productive way so you look later on in life when you get into relationships you know and i've been in relationships where you get into it with a woman or you get into it with your your peers your friends and they do something that angers you and your reaction is to yell and to scream at them because this is where your emotional your, your, your level of emotion or your level of emotional literacy. We talk about financial literacy. Your level of emotional literacy has reached a level and it hasn't surpassed that to where you're mature enough to voice your opinion in a respectful way. Hey, listen, bro, I didn't like how you did this. Or you go to your wife or your girlfriend or whatever the case may be, may be. And she did something wrong. You you just explain it to her without yelling at her. You know what I mean? Without putting her down, without wanting to automatically run away from the situation. Right. And I think this is something that I've dealt with. I really have. I've, I've been in these shoes the way I'm describing this. This is real life situation. So, you know, I'm speaking from experience. But the only way to grow from that is to reflect. And to not be arrogant, right? I spoke about arrogance before, but to not be arrogant and thinking that I have it all figured out or that, well, this person wronged me. And so my response was justifiable, but it's not. It's not. You know, and I oftentimes think because there are so many lessons that I've learned in Islam that that talk about this. But one of the things I often think about is the way that the companions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam how they described him like how his wives described him how he never raised his voice never yelled at them right never 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 laid a hand to them didn't abuse them didn't put them down even in times of 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 anger right even in times where he could justifiably be upset and in today's society In those moments, we would react with harshness. So it's really about growing and the only way to grow is to understand the seed, right? You know, you can't really grow any plants if you don't understand all of the 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 all of the resources that that seed needs to grow into the tree that you want it to be. And in order to grow and be the be a better person and be the person you want to be you have to reflect back on the past because your prior experiences are what make you who you are and i think that oftentimes instead of actually reflecting on the things we've been through to understand ourselves we cover those emotions and we cover those feelings and we prolong that we prolong those those traumas by running away from them right We fill ourselves with a busy work week. We fill ourselves with, you know, drugs, alcohol, weed, pills, all of these different things, music, money, uh, uh, television, entertainment, instead of actually reflecting back on our previous experiences to understand ourselves, 
We run from them. Excuse me. We run from them and we cover it up. And you will realize one day that when you get to the end of the road, you never actually dealt with the problem. All you did was put a blanket over top of it. It's like if I spill something on the carpet and I put the rug over top of it, the spill is still there. Even though it may look like a beautiful area, the, the spill is still there. And it festers and it festers and it festers until it gets to a point where you have no choice but to deal with it. You know, and a lot of times for people at the end of that road, you still don't actually deal with it. You just permanently in the situation, if you get what I'm saying, you know. And that's the thing that I, I fear for a lot of people is that we believe that we can escape our reality without understanding and knowing ourselves. And that's a problem. You know, it's a big problem. But in terms of how I dealt with this situation was one, you have to remove the arrogance out of your heart. You have to remove the idea of I know everything. I know what I'm doing. I know why I do this or the justification of your actions, because a lot of times I would justify yelling and abusing people by saying, well, they did this or they did that. But those things were not. My response to those things was not reasonable, right? You know, they they may have done something accident accidentally stepped on my shoes or something along those lines. And I'm blowing up at people, you know, and. That's just it's just wrong, you know, it's just wrong, you know, there's no way around it. It's just that's the wrong thing to do. You know, but the way that I've dealt with this to give you all the answer, because I'm coming to the end of this episode. The way that I dealt with this through Islam was, as I said, one, removing the arrogance from the heart, understanding that I don't know everything. But in the Quran, Allah tells you to ponder. You know what I'm saying? He tells you to question things. He tells you to question, you know, the Quran. Even the Quran itself gives gives a falsification test to prove or disprove whether or not this is truth. Right? So when you apply that same method to your life and you really think back and reflect and understand that we are creatures of habit. We are creatures of reason and we are creatures of and products of our life experiences. And that could be environmental, that could be societal, that can be psychological, whatever the case may be. Once you really start to begin to understand that and truly reflect. From a from a non biased perspective or a or a or a, uh, a a objective point of view, if you lay down your life on the table and look at it as if you were outside of yourself, you start to realize, man, I am really a messed. I messed up. I messed up, bro. You'll start to realize it is crazy, and but that's not that's not that's not bad. That's not bad because. As long as you are able to point out your flaws, you're able to grow from them. It's not until you start to cover your flaws and start to make up excuses for why you do the things that you do. It's not until then that you you become stagnant and you are no longer allowing yourself to grow. And growth is a process. You know, growth is a process. So that being said it's another episode of the peace seekers podcast we're back man finally i know it's been a long break we've been working on this, the podcast studio for this podcast as well as the another enemy podcast and just taking this podcast to bigger and better things you know getting some of the business handled behind the scenes and i got i have a lot of big things coming inshallah you know god willing you know, I have some some really, really big plans for this podcast um, and just, you know, for for 2021, you know, inshallah. So we'll see how things go, you know, um, but I'm but I'm excited for for what for what we have coming and what we've been working on. Uh, better quality up in the quality, uh, more guests. We have more guests lined up. Um just a lot of things, man. I, I won't I won't say too much. I won't say too much, but just a lot of things, just making everything official. Um, I appreciate everyone for listening and supporting. And 
down below there's a link that you can follow um if you need advice or you want to speak on the podcast or um just just need help with anything surrounded surrounding mental health overcoming struggles that you may be going through in life or if you think you have some advice for for the people click the link below and leave a voicemail and we can play live on the podcast you can stay anonymous um and you know hopefully we can just all learn and teach and grow from from hearing each other's stories man and that's all this podcast is about it's about individuals who are seeking peace you know you know i.e the name peace seekers um as always suicide prevention hotline down below and uh yeah man we got we got some great things coming you know inshallah ta'ala i've been khalid abdul salam bringing the peace as always, peace over depression. And may peace and blessings be upon you all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, man. Peace.